It was early 1971. Uh, you know, Apollo 11 and 12 had been successful. Apollo 13 had been an epic recovery from extreme peril. Uh, there was a lot of sensitivity. We wouldn't have wanted anything to go wrong with 14. Some people feared that that might be the last Apollo flight if it was unsuccessful. So that was in the background. Um, I, it was completely unexpected that uh, the mission would uh, come to a problem that, that would come to me to solve. But in fact, it was my software that was involved with the, the problem. Uh, a colleague, Bruce McCoy, came and told me, well, the abort discrete has a, appeared a couple of times. And I realized, of course, that that could ruin the mission. And um, the next step was to look at the code, to go back and find the code that was flying on that particular mission, and to figure out how to defeat my own software. Well, sort of spontaneously, a group came together to, to help with this. You know, the initial idea was mine, and as soon as we worked out the beginnings of the procedure, uh, some people rushed up to the hybrid simulator that was a floor above to actually try it out uh, in real time, in our real time simulation. Uh, I already mentioned that the initial step was to indicate that the abort was already in progress, and you could say that all the other steps were to clean up afterwards to get back to a normal situation. Um, it involved something like 65 keystrokes into the computer by the astronauts, uh, every one of which had to be perfect. In a lot of ways, the Apollo project was like a big collective art project. Um, there is an aesthetic element, a literary element to writing flight code. And I would say there's an artistic element to any kind of engineering, you know, imagination take, and intuition. Uh, play a role. So I don't make a, a hard line between art and engineering. You know, the Apollo project as a whole had a tremendous impact in terms of uh, teaching us what humans could do and they really applied themselves, uh, teaching us how much stronger our country was uh, by leading by example and showing that we could do uh, peaceful things like land on the moon. Uh, than uh, going to war, which was happening, happening simultaneously, as you know, uh, in Vietnam. I think the era we were in in the 60s was more idealistic, and, and I think the Apollo Project was both evidence of that and a result of that. I have had the uh, somewhat weird experience of watching myself played by an actor. Don? Don. What? Uh, in the series From the Earth to the Moon, I believe was the title, in 1996. And uh, the actor playing me walks into the room where the work was going to be done and sort of rolls up his sleeves and says, get me coffee and get me so-and-so, a name that I don't even recognize. Okay, I need coffee, I need Saltzman, and I, I think we gotta start from the beginning on this. And the idea that I would have walked in and demanded anything in that tone of voice would have been absurd. I would have been laughed at 